So what do you think? It's fun. Not too bad. Hey, what's up guys? Another day, another opportunity to make some money hanging out here. We're doing aerations today. I'm going to be showing you guys a ton of video and actually show you guys how to use the stand-on aerator. But before we do, look at this man. I'm over at Angelo's uh, Site 1 Landscaping Supply. Had to pick up some grass seed right there. Anyway, stay tuned, let's get this vlog started. So what do you think? It's fun. Not too bad? Yeah. All right guys, so hanging out with Brandon Budo here. So we're going to show you guys a little bit more about aerating today. Now, I'm gonna be doing some aerations here in a few minutes, but Brandon wanted to learn how the aerator actually works. Yeah, yeah, I've never done them. So he's uh, with his landscaping business, obviously offering uh, aeration as an upsell service. Yep, that and overseeding. Aeration overseeding. So a lot of you guys always ask um, questions about aeration and overseeding kind of tis the season. We do the spring or fall. Now you can uh, have the argument all day, when's the best time of the season to do it? Everybody's gonna say fall. For me personally, I have a ton of them that we do in the spring. So. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you how to use the aerator. We're going to show you some of the basics, answer some of the questions on pricing through this video. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you do, definitely shoot the video a big thumbs up. But so what was your first couple of questions you had with the aerator? You wanted to get familiar with the unit. Yeah, well, that's the thing is I've never ran them. So like, obviously you have your throttle. Well, here, and jump like, on up. Let's go through the tutorial. We'll show everybody. You're, uh, you're learning. Now you've done aerations with me with uh, the walk behind ones. Yeah, that, those beat you up though. Oh yeah, we, we do not like those, right? <laughs> I remember like your first few years of you in business yeah. and I was helping you that's all do I those and that's all we did was just run around behind those. Behind and, ones. Yeah, that definitely that tore us sucked. out. Yeah. That sucked. So that this probably cost nice. a year or two of my life. Right. My life well, you force. could probably do twice as many of them with oh. these, if not three times. Dude, you, know? you can clean up with this. Yeah. Well, let's go through the control panel so everybody here can follow along too. All right, so real simply, uh, we got your, uh, your on off, your parking brake, this is your down pressure, your PSI gauge. Uh, now your actual depth uh, pressure gauge that you can change it to have the cores deeper or lower or, mm -hmm. uh, or higher up. This is just your safety, like your on off to um, control this uh, actual- this foot pedal down here? Yep, that's gonna allow that foot pedal to well, engage. This engages the tank. So, yep, so this right here is to actually turn it on. So when you step on it, it'll uh, compress yep. the, the, uh, the tines. And then, just like a zero turn, right? You were talking about this. You got right, your two yeah, levers. Just like, well, that's the thing. Is like everybody knows I don't mow lawns. I've never been on a mower until I hopped on yours. But like yep. I am familiar with like equipment, like bobcats, get yeah. steer stuff like that. So I'm like, oh, it's basically the same control. Totally. So I'm familiar, but it's still different. Well, you did a bang up job with my mower going into the trailer. <laughs> you did a good oh, job. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were like, it was like, I was like, I didn't hit anything. <laughs> no, no. I didn't no. get a bill for like you know a couple grand or something for damages. <laughs> I I told him if you hit anything while you're in there, I'm gonna charge you like 400 bucks. But like you go through the trailer wall. Right. Cost yeah. like 1500. Oh my. God. Or through the through your workbench. You right. know? Oh my gosh, dude! All right, so here's the rule of thumb I want to give you guys. If you're uh, considering aerations, there's a lot of money to be made in it. It's a really easy service where, like you said, you can rent units for yeah. 75 bucks for a day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can do a weekly rental for 200 bucks for some of these walk behind units. The rule is that of thumb. What these go for for renting? Uh, no, this guy I think is 250 bucks for a day. I think for a day. Okay. Well, that makes sense because I'm. 
they seem profitable. I mean, dude, it's all, for sure. You, you can know, line up gas money and labor, really, you, just your time. You can line up fifteen hundred to two grand with a work yeah. and and knock these out in no time with a, a stand on. So here's my rule of thumb. Um, let's talk about pricing. Now, if you want to uh, do aerations, most people will say fifteen dollars per thousand square feet. So most subdivision lawns are between fifty to seventy-five to eighty-ish dollars. Now across the country, that varies, right? right? You charge more because you're in higher end uh, mm -hmm. net worth subdivisions. Sure. I just to do kind of like a blanket 50 bucks for a lot of mine. Um, let's talk about the overseeding. Uh, everybody's different, seed is expensive, so make sure that you get some really good pricing on your overseeding. Um, for a 4,000 square foot residential sub style lawn, I'm charging about 125 to 150 bucks for just the overseeding, mm -hmm. and then another 50 to 60 for the actual aeration. So that that's about the same with me. I'm charging 125 to 145 for overseeding, and then um, with the aerations, I'm doing 55 to 65 dollars. Yep per lot, depending on the size. If it's like a corner lot, I'm doing 65, but that's pretty much, you know, my max for my aerations. Yeah, so. yeah. So so here's the deal. If you guys have um, the rule of thumb to buy a unit like this, this was $8,500, uh, that's with fleet pricing. And the reason I threw down is because we were doing about 60 to 70 aerations yeah, I remember you were slamming in a them, week. Like when you first bought this thing. Yep, we, we would do about 60 a week and I'd rent a, like a Ryan 4, uh, walk behind aerator for about uh, 80 bucks a day. Then I started to do the weekly rate for 200 bucks from a rental place. And see, I when I got into aerations, I already had a huge customer base, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So just like with plowing, I had 50, 60 snow accounts and one or two commercials. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't just blindly jump into it. So I always tell you guys, rent until you want to buy. Now this guy being 9,500 bucks retail, that's that's a lot. But I will tell you this: the guys that do fertilizer and turf management, you can clean up with this kind of unit for sure. Like, totally. how many hours do I have on mine? Uh, 103 hours. 103 hours. So, we've we've more than made the 10 grand back on this, and we've made 20 grand. Now, here's the rule of thumb: like people was asking, when is a good time to buy one of these? My rule of thumb would be if you have about 100 aerations you do per season, that's when I feel like you could actually float. Yeah, I mean that's 5,500 bucks or five grand, or even if it's 45. 500 bucks you know mm -hmm. if you're doing 45 a pop i mean two yep. two seasons you make it up totally totally you can make the payments number one number two you can always make money on the overseeding yep right because totally. you can do this spring or fall um so really really uh simple stuff so let's go over this with you you're going to do a little uh test action here yep. you want to learn the the unit because right. eventually i'm just going to let you use the the unit you're going to yeah i mean i'll for me. pay you for the day give you a rate whatever 500 you want bucks. yeah 500 bucks <laughs> i was taking a thousand but hey 500 is even better Dude, you know a thousand <laughs> bucks that's not bad so like i shouldn't have spoke <laughs> it should have spoke, right? All right, so we're just testing it. We got the commons right here. All right, let's do this. Let's uh, turn it on. Rock, rock, All right, roll. we'll let everybody know. There might be like a little blooper section. A little blooper I've never done this. Yeah. Okay, so you got parking brake. Parking okay. brake. All right, turn it on. Now you said this. Uh, needs so to this be, is uh, carbureted, so we're going to choke it a yeah. little bit. It should turn right on, though. Yeah, because we're going to that. Put that down. All right, throttle it up. Foot's on. Now, hey, we're looking at this here. Now we're looking at this. Don't we need to pressurize this? Yeah, well, when you hit the button down oh, here, then okay. the pressure. So let's so see what we're at. this now? Yep, yeah, go ahead, hit it. So you can see the pressure's going to build up. What are we at? Right now. Crank it up to let's there. crank it up to 150. Keep going, keep going, keep going. A little bit more. All right, that's good right there. So we're at about 150 PSI. So 150 PSI will put how much of a core into, like how much of about, a plug will you be pulling? So the more compacted or dry the soil is, the higher the PSI, about 200, 250 maybe. Uh, if it's a little bit more lush like this area is, we want to do 100, 150 PSI. The goal is to pull at least a two inch core. Now, if you do anything more than that, you might hit like Comcast lines, AT&T lines, so be really careful about that. Um, if you only do like a 100 PSI, you're only gonna get a half inch or quarter inch core, and that's not really good for overseeding, for the lawn to be aerated, the customer's not really getting the value out of it, so I always do about 150 to 200 PSI. Okay. Pretty good? So, let me ask you this. Now, if like, you know, for people who didn't know, like if we're going around a home or some landscape beds or like yep. even a sidewalk, and you know, typically there's like, you know, some sprinkler heads. Should we stay like a foot away from sidewalks and like from homes, like foundations? This guy's got a good question. So what I do is we always want to have the customer mark the sprinkler heads, right? Right. But here's the deal. If they don't mark them, I say we don't take responsibility for it. Pretty simple, right? Now what I do, just to be uh, safe in the CYA and to protect them as well, we stay a foot away from all boundary lines. 
So whether we're butting up to the neighbor's property, right. we want to stay a foot away from that last mowing, that last foot, because that's usually where the sprinklers are at for the side of the property. Sure. Of course, along the house, same thing. We want to stay about a foot away from the perimeter. That way we're not hitting any sprinkler heads by the landscaping beds or anything along the house. Right. Now, of course, ideally we want to have the customers mark the sprinkler heads. So that way we don't hit anything, obviously, because we don't want to have to repair sprinklers. But I always tell them, if you don't mark stuff, and we do hit anything, you're responsible for that, and we'll come out and we'll fix that sprinkler head for 25 bucks, but it's not gonna be on us. Right. Um, one other thing people always ask about, invisible fences, stay away from invisible fences. You can have the customer mark those, but it's a lot harder. So invisible fences, I don't even offer it to those customers. I'm not getting responsible for that. You tear up one of those things, you gotta find that loose wire, that, that's, that's game over. So. so should people like should we ask all of our customers like hey do you guys have invisible fencing yeah if so like those need to be marked because we're not responsible invisible fence I don't offer it all at all you guys could you just have to have the customer mark it but it's just there's too much going on with invisible fences but with sprinklers we always tell the customers to mark it now how about with the invisible fence wouldn't that be almost be the same like it's like a Comcast cable line running through like it should still be an inch or two below ground the, the Comcast lines generally speaking should be four or five inches below the ground which they typically probably never are which but, they never yeah. are when they rides up closer to the house we always want to let off this uh the, the tines and the, the aeration right because we don't want to poke those uh, lines where they kind of goes up to the house it's going to ride up generally speaking the line should be about four five six inches underground we're only doing a one or two inch core but the invisible fence those guys they trench it too but i've noticed personally that those lines are just not as deep as the comcast lines have you ever hit one of those lines uh yeah we we've hit comcast lines before the rule of thumb is with comcast lines i always tell people if we do happen to hit one no worries no emergencies generally speaking the comcast uh or your direct tv or well that's dish but whoever's your cable company usually they come out the next day for free to repair that i've never been charged for uh, a replacement line we've hit maybe four or five sure and my customers have never been charged uh, Comcast wants to charge those customers so they have an incentive to get out there and fix those lines right ASAP but let's let's put it to the test let's, let's show everybody what we're doing throttle up you're good to go we'll so see. let's do this let's go all the way down and when you get to the uh, to the end let off up the step do your zero turn don't do a zero turn with them engaged right okay and then come all the way back Makes sense. so throttle up let's see how this goes let's stay in the middle okay it'll be the most dry. well here I'll like I'll, I'll go down, I'll whip around, and I'll start down there, and I'll come this way. Let's do that. Oh, boy. So, you got to disengage the parking right. brake. So, I can't, this will engage once I put my foot on the pedal. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yep. So throttle up. Stay in the middle because this, this is going to be really set, soft. So we're good. Yep, you got your pressure cool. set? Okay. Yep. This helps you guys out with aerations and uh, honestly you can add a lot of money to doing aerations so if you guys have questions leave them down below love to hear your guys thoughts by the way what do you guys charge for aerations that's what I want to know uh, I feel 50 to 60 bucks a, a sub lawn is not too bad and I feel $15 per 1k is a pretty good rate Keep in line so we know, like, because you said the width of the track for yep. the. Uh, so, by the way, don't zero turn with the tines engaged, did you or no? No. With this unit, it takes about uh, one second for them to lift up. Okay. Yep, so ride past where you're gonna go, let them lift up, and then do your turn. Okay. Same thing to engage them, takes about one or two seconds for them to compress into the so, lawn. So, like, you almost wanna, like, stop, engage, go. I'd say about five feet towards the end, let up. Okay. That's what I do. Brandon had a good question. So, with lining up the actual aeration, the unit is uh, 
30 some inches, 33 inches wide. The, the tire track is 52 inches. So if you go tire track to tire track, you're going to be missing a lot of surface area, right? Sure. So we want to make sure that we're lining it up tine to tine, which is about a 30 inch, uh, 30 inch width. So good question. Yeah. So maybe like with this unit here, watch out. With this unit, like, so you say this right here is kind of like your rule of thumb of like, hey, these yep. are where my tines are. I'd say the this tower. Okay. So in between the wheels. So basically like right between here. Yep, exactly. Do another one. I'll do one more run. Yeah, I'll go pass. full throttle and see if it's a little lower. Let's do it. Stand back. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready. I give you is uh, before you turn, give it another second or two to let those tines come up. Okay. Because it's all hydraulically actuated or whatever, so it's not as fast as you think. It takes about two seconds for it to come on up. Okay. So if you if you get to that last 10 feet, then let it up, or just just kind of stop, let it come up, and then turn. Okay. Give it an extra two seconds or three seconds on the turn. Right. Beyond that, pretty straightforward. You can see yeah, the lanes. Pretty simple. You can see the lanes. Yeah. So that was all the way down. This is all the way back. What do you think? I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, I don't feel bad. Yeah, not too bad. No. So you ready to go out there and make some money? I'm ready. Again, so here's the deal. If you want to rent one of these units for the day, it's about 200 to 250 bucks. I would totally rent one uh, if I was you guys. The reason I bought mine was two reasons. One, I got fleet, and the two, uh, number two was I knew eventually I had my enclosed trailer so I could tote this thing with me. Mm -hmm. So every time in the fall when people are like, hey, can you do me an aeration? I always, I could have the unit with me and do 50 bucks here, 50 bucks there, 50 bucks there, that adds up. Yeah. Versus trying to line up 10, 20 of these for a day and having an actual thousand dollar revenue day to kind of justify that rental. Right. So for me, I just wanted it with me. Plus, dude, I used to do 60 to 80 uh, walk behind aerations. Remember that? Yeah. Dude, we would well, rent. I think we ran two. We two ran two pieces <laughs> out of the property. Of, like him and I were chasing each other. Dude, it was insane. <laughs> I like I would go through a bottle of like a leave. Remember? Oh yeah. I'd be like, dude, take two of these. You're gonna need it. Yeah, and then, I mean, if you if you want a full arms, body workout, that's what I would suggest. Oh my god, know? dude, your forearms and oh my god, like it was just it was brutal. So this was just like a natural uh, evolution. So um, yeah. So if you guys have questions, uh, leave us a comment down below. I'll answer anything I can do. Uh, aerations can be really profitable spring or fall. Honestly, like you can rent all this stuff at like Sun Belts, your Home mm -hmm. Depot, your local tool rental place. So pretty shrimp, uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and uh, great way to add some extra revenue, especially in the spring if you're trying to get your season started. Right. That's, well, that's it. Is because I had what I had a good handful or two mm -hmm. in the spring. You know, just uh, getting going. Eight to ten, easy. Yeah. And that and, was uh, extra six, seven, eight hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had you go run them for me because I didn't. You yeah. know, I wasn't. I was. I Still think we busy just, at the other at the time doing projects and stuff. But yep. I had you go do it, put money in your pocket, put a few bucks in my pocket. Yeah, so. you can't beat that, especially like if you have friends that could, like have one of these, or you mm -hmm. just rent it off them for twenty bucks, man, twenty five bucks. You know, it's right. nothing crazy. Like, we're all trying to help each other out. That's, hey, it beats five hundred bucks. So totally, dude. I mean, <laughs> I didn't see like I didn't even know you could rent the sand on aerators because nobody had them yet. Right. So I dropped you know eighty five hundred. I financed it, but I dropped eight, eighty five hundred dollars on it. And then I go to the uh, Chet's rental down the down the road, mm -hmm. and they had like five of these. Right. They're like, oh, you can rent them for two hundred bucks. Today, I was like, oh, yeah, it wouldn't be like, better than going to buy yeah. the unit. You know no, but I mean? I'm still glad I bought it. So, well, yeah, I mean, it's you know. yours and it'll be here forever. You know? Yeah, this thing is, has 100 hours on it. You could put another 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 hours on this thing. Mm -hmm. If you put 2,000 hours on an aerator, you made a half a million dollars off it. Yeah. Okay, like easily. Like, it's not, it's not even, it's the easiest no brainer service you could probably do besides slinging mulch. Yeah. For a new guy. Totally. So, all right, guys, over now, Brandon and Vision Landscape. Uh, we're going to have some more videos with uh, Mr. Mike Bedell on how to overseed. So, stay tuned to that. If you guys enjoyed it, like I said, shoot the video a big thumbs up, and guys, we'll catch you on the next one. See you guys.